The Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Easter. It is good to be gathered together as God's people in this place. We'll continue to prepare ourselves for worship using the Celtic Alleluia found on the front page of your bulletin.
with joy in our, in our responsive opening gestures. Christ is risen. Is risen indeed. Christ is the light of the world. Christ is the living word. Christ is the living water. Christ is the great table host. Our gathering hymn is number 205, Alleluia, Jesus is Risen. Please note we'll be singing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. People of God, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance. From the one who is, who was, and whoever shall be. And all God's people said, Amen. You may now be seated. Trusting in God's love for us as seen in Jesus Christ, let us join our voices and hearts together to confess our sins before God and each other. Almighty God, our world is filled with corruption. 
power disguises itself as truth. Convenience masquerades as goodness. Selfish pleasure imitates love. We confess to you, O God, that we have been caught in the web of the world's sin. By the power of the Holy Spirit, save us from these temptations and free us for the glad obedience that we may see the joy of Jesus' resurrection and receive the promise of everlasting life. Friends, God has promised salvation to us, to our descendants, and to all who are near and far. In the name of Jesus Christ, known that you are forgiven, as forgiven people, how are we to live? We'll use hymn number 871 as our guidance for how God calls us to live. Friends, the peace of the risen Christ be with you. Please share a sign of Christ's peace with those around you.
children, young at heart, to come and join me up front. We're going to sing our song in a round today, so we really need your energetic help. Okay, Mr. Kristen, ready? Are we starting together? Oh. We're starting in separate parts. No, no, no. So you guys start and we'll follow. Okay. So we're the King of Kings. We're starting with King. We're starting with King of Kings. <clears throat> King of Kings and Lord of. My breath a little bit. Was that fun? It was fast. Yeah. Was it a little bit confusing? Yes, yes. yes. Was it hard to focus on your part? I was just focusing really hard on our part. I was trying not to pay any attention to the other side. Did you have that too? Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that song and singing that song is a good lesson for us today in paying attention in noticing things. We are going to hear a story today from the book of Luke. That is one of the gospel writers. So far this Easter, we have heard from the gospel of Matthew. Last week, we heard from the gospel of John. And this week, we hear from the gospel of Luke. And all three of these books in the Bible were written by different people. And all of them are telling stories about the day that they found out that the tomb was empty. Jesus died, right? And they put Jesus' body in the tomb. And then after three days, what happened? He came alive again. God raised Jesus from the dead. It is an amazing story. It is a mystery and a wonder. And it's something we have to notice. And sometimes along the way we might feel really distracted. And sometimes we might not be able to notice at all what's happening. And I think our story today from the Gospel of Luke is going to invite us to notice. To notice all the places that we might see Jesus alive. So I wonder this week, as you go about your lives, how you might see where Jesus is alive. Maybe you will see Jesus alive in all of the beautiful spring outside. Has anybody noticed all the flowers? Does anybody have tulips coming up in their yards blooming? Or daffodils, you have friends who have tulips. Or the beautiful trees that are flowering. Some of our trees are already getting their leaves. That's a way for us to notice that Jesus is alive. I think we might also notice that Jesus is alive when we see our friends and our families. So I hope that you might have your eyes open this week to see Jesus alive. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of music. 
We thank you for the gift of the Bible and these stories written by different people so long ago that help us to see you. God, we do want to see you. We want to have our eyes opened to see you right now in our lives and in this world today. Would you help us to do that? We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may go back to your seats or to Little Inn. Our first scripture reading comes from the book of Acts. We'll start just with a little section of verse 14 from chapter 2 and then jump ahead to verse 36. Uh, Listen now for the word of the Lord. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And Peter testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue, too, in our reading through 1 Peter, chapter 1, starting in verse 17. If you invoke his father, the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like gold or silver, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
pray with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, you who are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes to us from Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13. Now on that same day, that resurrection day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped, but we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, Oh, how foolish you are. And how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is now almost nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had, made known, he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Maybe you can think of a news story that you see or experience as a defining moment in history or in your life. A day you remember by which you can mark life events. Sputnik, Pearl Harbor, the day JFK was shot the Challenger space shuttle explosion, September 11, 2001, the election of our first black president. Or maybe you can think of a significant personal moment, a moment from which you cannot and have not fully walked away, the death of a loved one, a cancer diagnosis, a lost job, a missed opportunity. These moments in life's journey create a before and an after. 
and they come with a host of questions and emotions. We might shake our fists at God. We might shed tears of sorrow or fear. We want answers. We want explanations. We want to know how this event, why this event, how this moment fits in the world and in our lives. The disciples on the road to Emmaus are processing this kind of moment in their lives. The crucifixion of their teacher, their hoped for Messiah, a man they knew as prophet and Lord. Even though Jesus had tried to warn them, to prepare them, to provide the rationale, it was as if a major era had ended in their lives. There was a before and an after. <clears throat> and they have questions. And they want explanations. They are trying to make sense of the world that they find themselves in, a world that feels a bit helpless and a bit hopeless. They talked as they walked, perhaps on their way back to their hometown where they anticipated picking up the lives that they had dropped years before. The hopes that had once overflowed their hearts with joy were now a distant memory, a deep sorrow, maybe even a source of embarrassment. It was probably hard to know what to think, what to believe, what to even say on the road. Jesus joins these disciples on the road, but they don't know that it's him. And Jesus takes a familiar role with them as they walk together on the road. He is the teacher and they are the disciples. They are together on the way, this road of discipleship that they had been walking before. And even though they are initially convinced that this stranger is completely clueless, before they know it, they can't get enough of his teaching. For Jesus tells them the big picture story, the story of their God who is a God of covenant, a God who loves a people, a God who pursues and who challenges. A God who provides judges and kings and prophets. A God who sent the promised Messiah to them. Jesus takes time on the road to interpret for them not just the events of the past days and weeks, but the generations and the centuries of God's people. This is the road that we are walking today as people of faith. On this road, we find ourselves faced with discouragement, with disappointment, with doubt and wavering hopes. On this road, we too have the scriptures, stories that we read and rehearse together week in and week out. And as we listen to the story of creation, fall, redemption, and recreation again and again, we are just trying to make sense of our lives and of this world. For where is Jesus? When knocking on the wrong front door, turning in the wrong driveway, or getting in the wrong car is a threat to human life. Where? How is justice or peace possible when military might dominates the scene, always seeming to win? Where is our hope when the cancer diagnosis looms so large? While scripture clearly spells out for us the big picture of God's plan to redeem and to restore and to reconcile, it does not act as the answer book for all of the questions we find ourselves asking. Scripture does not directly answer why natural disasters happen or why bad things happen to good people or what exactly happens when we die. Scripture doesn't explain tragic deaths, diseases like cancer and addiction, or our general life struggles. We are on the road. And in the midst of our questions, we struggle to notice or to recognize Jesus in our midst, to hear God's voice moving us in new directions, to sense the Spirit nudging us with any kind of renewed hope. We talk and we talk and we still struggle. We don't get the clarity or the rational explanations that we long for. We are bewildered. We are resigned that change will never come. We are overcome by fear. And yet this is not at all the way the Emmaus story goes. Nor is it the way that our story is intended to go. 
Although it seems like the disciples have to twist Jesus' arm to get him to stay, it's pretty likely that Jesus was planning to stay all along. You see, the disciples didn't know what they didn't know. They didn't know that their eyes had been closed until the very moment that their eyes were opened. Jesus is revealing himself to them in the breaking of the bread is this moment of profound wonder and incomparable joy. It's the moment that resurrection reality bursts in their midst and all of a sudden they know. They believe. They are given a new defining moment with a before and an after with a profound impact on their role as disciples, as apostles, as the ones who are being sent to bring the good news. And they have to. They have to bring this good news back to the community of disciples who were also bewildered. There was no time for them to lose as they hurried back to Jerusalem all seven miles of distance to share the good news with all of Jesus' followers. To help to change the story. That story and all of the stories that they would tell, too, of this defining resurrection to new life moment. The truth is that we don't know that our eyes have been closed until that moment when we realize that they've been opened. For all that we know, for all that we care about, for all that we can say and do in this lifetime, we do not control the one who opens and closes eyes. But from this story, we might find hope that Jesus walks with us. For scripture does tell us that God hears us, when we cry out. Scripture does tell us that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Scripture does tell us that God loved the world so much that he sent his son, Jesus the Christ, who became flesh and dwelled among us, humbling himself even to death on the cross. And that God raised him from the dead. Scripture does tell us over and over again that goodness is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hate, that light is stronger than darkness, and that life is stronger than death. Jesus is walking the road with us. Sometimes our eyes are opened through the reading and the hearing of the word, or through the kind words or gentle touch of a friend, or through our awe at a blooming flower or sweet bird song. Sometimes our eyes are opened through the burning of our hearts as we look out at the world and know with every fiber of our being that God made us and that God made this world not for violence or hatred or darkness or sickness, but for peace and for love and for light and for health, for community and connection, for belonging and for flourishing. On this road of faith and life, we are invited to come to the table. This place, where in the breaking of the bread, we catch a glimpse of our risen Savior, our living Lord, our greatest hope. And in this meal, through the witness of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we get a taste of faith and of hope. And this taste comes to us in the midst of all that life throws at us, in the midst of all of the troubles of this world. And this taste and this experience of faith and hope can transform the ways that we see and respond to the news. It causes us to fall on our knees in prayer for peace and for strength and for courage. It leads us to send money and resources and to give up our time. Friends, it might even lead us to protest, for crying out loud. But this feast binds us together as brothers and sisters in Christ who are willing to serve one another, to stand beside each other in the gut-wrenching, hard and grieving times, as well as the happy and the healthy and the joyful times. Will you come? Will you come and see Jesus with me at this table? Friends, the Lord be with you.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy and right it is. In our joyful duty to give you thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator, almighty and everlasting God, you created heaven with all its hosts and the earth with all its plenty. You've given us life and being and preserve us by your providence. And you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ. The eternal word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and we bless you, O God. With your whole church on earth and with all the company of heaven, we worship and adore your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Most righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of the faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be to us the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain to the unity of faith and grow up in all things into Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf, these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. And that he betrayed Jesus to the bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Every time you eat this, do so in remembrance of me. Hey, after they had eaten together, he took the cup. And he gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the sins of many. Every time you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me. The bread which we break and the cup which we bless are the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Friends, I invite you to partake in communion this morning to come and see Jesus here with us by coming forward down the center aisle. We'll hand you a piece of bread. Go to either side to get a cup and return to your seat by the outer aisle. If you are unable to come forward, please know that an elder is willing to serve you in your seat. I invite the elders to come forward at this time.
we pray, I'll invite you, when I say God of resurrection, to respond with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God, we come to you grateful for the meal of which we have partaken. We ask that you hear our prayers this morning. For the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the great 50 days of Easter, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness to Jesus' name. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the governments of the world and their leaders, that they may resist the corruption of sin and serve the common good. God of the resurrection, hear our prayer. For our planet, that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the poor and for the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge and hope, and that the church may offer hospitality and care. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the young facing the challenges of growing up, and those older as they face the challenges of aging, and those at all stages in between, may each find dignity and purpose at this point in their life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For the sick and those in distress, that they might find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. For our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and share in our resources. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. We pray too for our enemies, that they may receive too the goodness of God's bounty and that we, your servants, may not return evil for evil. God of resurrection, hear our prayer. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, in whose name we are bold to pray together, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, a few announcements about our life together here as God's people at Second Church. There is still time to participate in the 50 Days of Spiritual Practices. Um, those came out in the email. There's also some hard copies in the office if you would like one of those. Uh, there's no youth group this afternoon, but our last youth group is uh, next Sunday from 5 to 6.30. It's a combined youth group. Uh, we have our final Wednesdays at second of the program year this coming Wednesday. We'll have hot dogs and hamburgers on the menu. Um, please take note of the various opportunities in the Spire uh, to serve, looking ahead towards Summer Splash at Logan Estates and the Love Our Schools initiative. In two weeks, we'll have our congregational meeting um, in which we'll have brunch afterwards. Uh, we'll certainly encourage you to stay for that. All of those who made Profession of Faith last week are very excited because they get to vote at that meeting in two weeks. Some of them only made their Profession of Faith so they could vote. It's not true, not true. Uh, and lastly, we invite you to come back at three this afternoon uh, for our April 2nd series, which features the West Michigan Children's Choir, direct, co-directed by our very own Kristen, and uh, some SRC singers, there she is, SRC singers in there with the, uh, Lucas and William Hoffman and Greta as well. So we certainly invite you to come for that this afternoon. Having collected our tithes and offerings, which are all from God to begin with, we present them back to God. gifts, O oh God, from what we have first received from you, 
Use them, we pray, to enable the ministries of this church to flourish as we together serve our neighbors, both near and far away, by showing love and doing mercy. Amen. Our sending hymn is number 141, We Are People on a Journey. We sang this a couple times during Lent. We encourage you on the chorus to sing the first time in Spanish and the second time in English. Please join in our sending litany. At the table, we remember our good shepherd who laid down his life for us sheep. So, so we, we go, go into, into the, the world, world to share what we can with, with others. others. From the font, we, are no, we know that we have been raised with Christ and made a new people. So, so we, we proclaim, proclaim resurrection, resurrection and hope. Rooted in the word, we see that Christ has burst forth from the tomb. So, so we, we demonstrate, demonstrate this new life in acts of love and healing. Transformed by the light no darkness can overcome. We, we rejoice, rejoice and carry peace forward. Now, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. 